You're not in this by yourself. When you activate your faith, you activate your angel. That's what he's there for. Amen. He, he's, he's an operator. He'll add strength to you. He'll minister to you. I know my God has made the way for me. I know my God has made the way for me. Hebrews 1.14 says that God sends His angels to minister to believers. On today's Believer's Voice of Victory, learn some ways that God's angels will work to help you. Let's join Kenneth Copeland to hear this powerful message. One of my heroes, pastor of the church in Harlem, Jesse Winley. What a man of faith, Jesse Winley. Pastor of the Soul Saving Station in Harlem. What a guy. Whew. Faith. Giant. The man had 16 children. Had to be a man of faith. <laughs> now, when he, well, either way you look at it, he had to be a man. Anyway, he, he, was, he was pastoring and they were starving. They were literally starving to death because the church wouldn't, wouldn't feed them. Well, they, they, they went on to New York and he began to pastor that, that church and he's a man of faith. And God blessed him. And it began to prosper. The Lord. And this, this is back, back years ago. What, Jerry, what, what would you think? Probably, he, he was I alive. Him, I met him in like 71. 71. Yeah. And he, would, he was what then, probably 60 years old or so, yeah. something like that. Jesse set up a meeting in the street right in the middle of just the worst part of New York City. And while he's preaching, he's got the, oh, his, you know, his singers are up on the, the, the platform with him. They had a platform set up on one side of the street. The street was here and people were out there listening to uh, Brother Winley preach. <clears throat> and all the singers in there singing and, and, and he's preaching. Well, here, come a, here comes a gang of guys, and, and literally a gang, gang members, and they're coming across the street at him with knives and chains, and they're coming after him. They're going to pull him down off that platform. Everybody on the platform ran. Everybody scattered. Jesse Winley took his Bible like that. He jumped off of that platform, and he took off after them. <laughs> now, he said... He said, I, 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 I stepped over in a place where he said, I, I, I didn't know what happened. He said, when I came to myself, he said, I was across the street and had these guys backed up against a wall and they're, they're on their knees saying, we didn't know it's real, Brother Whitley. We didn't know it's real. We didn't know it's real. He said, I don't know what they saw. Well, you can pretty well figure what they saw. They saw his angels. I've had that happen to me. <laughs> they Jerry. told him, we saw your angels and they had golden 45s. Praise God. I'd forgotten about that. They saw his angels and they, he said, they saw his angels and they had golden 45s. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, know, I know a man that went out, that, that there were some guys that were out to kill him. And he's a pastor. He, did, he didn't, never did think about anything like that. And they sent message to him that there was some kind of message that somebody needed help or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. And they needed to come out to this certain place. Well, he just got in his car and went out there and got out there and wasn't anything there. And when he got out of his car, he looked around and uh, he didn't see anybody. So he just got in the car and went back to town and thought, well, you know, I don't know what happened. He said later, one of these guys contacted me 
Now, they were, they were laying in wait for him. And they were, they were going to they were going to really work him over with the idea of beating him to the point of death or killing him. And he said, uh, who were those soldiers you had with you? He said, what are, what are you talking about? He said, you had soldiers with you. And he, and he said, they wore white gloves and they had white helmets, and every one of them was carrying a carbine. I won't know who they were. He said, well, that's my protective detail. <laughs> well, he said, when we saw them, we ran off. He said, we didn't want no part of that. <laughs> Amen. White helmets, white gloves, and every one of them had a carbine. Yeah, M1A1 carbine. They recognized. Isn't that good? Yeah. I was preaching in uh, Beaumont, Texas, right, right at the beginning of this ministry. I hadn't been, oh, I'd just been on the field a couple of years, I guess, something like that. And I was uh, preaching in a small church there. And there was one fellow that just, man, I mean, he just came every day and, and uh, the, no, wouldn't any of the Pentecostal people come. <laughs> And the Pentecostals all said, wildfire, 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 you know. But boy, the Baptists were filling the place up. It got started. A bunch of Baptists there. And man, a lot. We were having a meeting. We went three weeks in that place. Well, this, this fellow, but, and man, I mean, he was, he was there. And I noticed one day, he did right in the middle of the message, he just got up and left. I said something wasn't all that Baptist, and it made him mad, and he left. And he's gone for several services. And I noticed then, he, when he came back in, he just came back in the back door of the church and just sat down right there in that first seat. Just sat there while I was preaching. All of a sudden, he went. He looked like he'd gone in shock. Well, I noticed it, but, you know, when, when the building any, any longer than about four or five rows back, you see something like that. And I didn't pay attention to it. I just went ahead while I was doing it. He, and he came up out of service. He said, I, I'm, I need to have lunch with you if I could. I said, well, yeah, because I, I want to know what, what happened to him, you know. And he told me what I said that made him mad. And he said, I ain't never going, I ain't going back over there. <laughs> Listen to that. So he stayed away several days. But then the Lord got on him, you know, and he said, no, no, I want you to go back over there. No, he said, I'm not going. He said, I want you to go back at least one more service. Well, I'll go one more time. And if he says anything like that again, I'm never going back. The Lord said, oh, that's all right. Just, just go one more time. He said, Brother Kenneth, I was sitting back there mad at you. He said, all of a sudden, I saw the biggest fella I have ever seen in my life. And he said, he looked like he's fastened to you. He said, look, there, there wasn't any space between the two of you. He said, he's huge. And he said, you know the commercial, Mr. Clean? He said, that's who he looked like. He said, no hair on his head, white shirt, white breeches. And he said, he, he was right with you everywhere. You didn't, you couldn't move. <laughs> Thank you. He's here right now. So <laughs> it, 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 he, he's always, always there. And uh, he said, he said, you, you'd be preaching along and he said, and you'd stop a minute and said, he'd lean over and whisper something in your ear. And he said, I mean, he said, you just break in the middle. <laughs> and he said, I never saw anything like that in my life. And he thought, Lord, I wish I hadn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> now you have an angel or more than one working with you. Amen. He belongs to you. He'll be with you all the days of your life. He's always before the face of the father. And they're not little fat babies with wings. <laughs> now, there, there are little, little small angels like that, but they're, they're a totally, totally different class 
of angels. And the ones that we're dealing with look like men. They are men. They're angels, but they're angelic men. They didn't born a man and turn into an angel. There ain't no such thing as that. You're a man, you're a man. You're a woman, you're a woman. That's all you ever will be. Now, you're higher class creation than an angel. They excel in strength. They're tremendously strong, but they all bow to the name of Jesus. They are here to add their strength to what you do. You don't need to be provoking them. And in the name of Jesus, you do have authority where your angels are concerned. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them that shall be heirs of salvation? Now, why, why talk about this? Well, you're not in this by yourself. When you activate your faith, you activate your angel. That's what he's there for. Amen. He, he's, he's an operator. He'll add strength to you. He'll minister to you. I, I, I told you this last night. I'm, I'm going to put it in here again because this, this is very important. I told you about that fellow that, that had heart situation and he had believed God. His faith went active where his heart was concerned. And I have it on good authority that this happened in this prayer line tonight. You just couldn't see it. But he woke up in the night he just woke up and there's a fellow standing there next to his bed with his hands in his chest. He's got his hands down in his chest working on his heart. And he saw him and he reached and he said, everything's all right, go on back to sleep. So he just went back to sleep. He woke up the next morning, he had a totally new heart. Amen. The Lord just granted him the blessing of, of seeing that. And that's wonderful. Well, I want to see one. Now, yeah, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where in the Word does it promise you you'll see an angel? Well, then don't, go, don't start praying that way. The devil will accommodate you if you do because he transforms into an angel of light and, and he'll mess with you. So you don't have a bit of praying that, but you can, you can expect your angel to work with you and you need to pray, Father, reveal to me how to aid my angel and their work with this ministry and with me and with my family, reveal to me how I can aid them and, and things that I need to do, things I don't need to be doing that get in their way. I need to know how they think. I need to know, I, 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 need, I need to be on I'm, on, I'm on their side. You understand? And God, God said, don't provoke your angel. Now, 23rd chapter of Exodus, verse 20. Are you there? Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. Now, they don't have any emotions. They, they don't have human emotions. Now, since they were created by God, then, then they, I mean, you know, they're emotional beings, but they don't have human emotions. They're not going to put up with your or my unbelief. Now, they, they're not going to do anything about it. They don't have that kind of authority. But when you're talking unbelief, they, they just stand idle. You provoke him with unbelief, disobedience, saying things other than the word, refusing 
to obey or using the world's words. That just scares me to death and all that kind of stuff. They're there because they've been commanded to be there. They'll be there all your life. But don't waste them. Now notice what he said. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. In fact, he, he, doesn't, he, he won't pardon you. He doesn't even have the authority to do that. Now, this was in the old covenant. In the new covenant, our transgressions have already been dealt with by the blood of Jesus. Amen. But still, in ignorance or, or, or whatever, you, you can still say and do things that render your angels absolutely helpless. They, they, they can only just do so much just out of the pure grace of God but nowhere like what they've been assigned to do and what they're capable of doing. Now notice, I wondered a lot of times I'd read this and I'd say, Lord, I don't understand this. You shall serve, verse 25, you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and water and I will take sickness from the midst of it. Now wait a minute. What is wrong with it? He and I. And the Lord said, well, read the rest of the chapter. Oh, okay. I send an angel. Oh, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way, to bring you into the place I've prepared. Beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. He'll not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you'll indeed obey his voice and do what I speak, then I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and your angel will bless your bread and your water, and I'll take sickness from the midst of you. Wow, isn't that wonderful? Amen. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Boy, I'll, I'll be out throughout eternity. I'll, I'll never forget the time I first heard this. Oh, my goodness. First Kenneth Hagin tape I ever heard. Man, I didn't even know who he was. I was in my mother's living room. She and Gloria had gone in the back room, she wanted to show Gloria something. We came down there to preach Brother Harold Nichols' church. And um, I said, Mother, you got any tapes or anything to listen to? She said, yeah. She handed me Brother Hagin's tape. You write your own ticket with God on one side. And uh, uh, what was the name of that other side, Keith? You can have what you say. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. And right at the end of one of those, he said, well, yeah, 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 I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And he took this first chapter of Hebrews, but to which of the angels, verse 13, said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Are they not all, say all. all, all, all of them, all of them, ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs unto, of salvation. Now, when you go into chapter two, therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? That wasn't talking about being born again. That's talking about the salvation and deliverance that's been put in the hands of these angels. Amen. And I, I heard that for the first time. I, I tell you what, it, it literally hit me so hard it knocked me in the floor. I, and when Gloria came back in there, I was in the floor on my back underneath my mother's coffee table. Just laying there on my back, thinking, dear God, I got angels. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I got angels. <laughs> I remember I said something stupid like, oh, what's her name? I won't tell you what other dumb things I did. 
But it struck me like a bolt. My, my, my. Every believer ought to know this. Amen. My mother's brother, extremely strong man. He wasn't a great big man. But oh. He was in a car wreck late one night. He missed a curb, a curb in the highway, and the car rolled over and over. No seat belts in those cars. Then. The door came open, threw him out, and the car went up on its nose like that and came back down and fell on top of him. The top, well, his feet were sticking out one side, and it's laying on him and his head sticking out the other side. Well, he'd pick that car up and hold it for a little bit and breathe. And, um, and, and, and I heard him tell mother, he said, uh, he said, I, I, I figured I could, he said, I figured I could flip that car off of me. Well, it's a Studebaker. It's a full grown car. But he said, my feet were sticking out on the other side, and if I did that, I'd break my feet off. <laughs> and he said, I'm, I'm praying. He said, I just, he said, in the middle of the night, man, there wasn't no way anybody going to find me out there. And he said, so I just lift that car up and hold it as long as I can hold it and let it back down and breathe a little bit and hold it back up again. He did that for a good while. And he said, then there was a woman came up to me and put her hand on my face and said, Pete, everything's going to be all right. I've got people coming. And she, now th that may not be the, the exact words, but, and, and she stayed there and kept her hand on him and kept strengthening him. And, and while he'd lift that thing up and breathe a while, and in a little while, there's some people drove up out there. Now, he had rolled off that highway, off down in this, this gully, deep place. You couldn't even see that car from the highway. You couldn't see it in the daytime from the highway. But she directed traffic there. Ha, 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 ha. You know who that was. And he said it was. He said, he said it was an angel. He said, I, I can tell by looking at her. Well, this has to do with faith. This has to do with believing God. Faith is the currency of the spirit realm. Come by with no money. Faith is the currency. Amen. Faith is our medium of exchange. Everything that's heavenly, everything that's in the spirit realm belongs to us. And like I've heard Brother Bill say, God didn't ask you to pay for it. He told you to believe for it. Well, faith is our currency. You can believe for a whole lot more. Actually, under most conditions, you can believe for more than you can believe money enough to pay for it. Your faith is more active without the money, depending on what kind of ministry in which you're called. Now, there are some times in certain situations that God needs you to believe him for money because there's things, certain things he wants you to do that take money to do it. Like when you're going to, he, he, he has a need for you to do something financially that involves other people. For instance, we live by the kingdom of God. We live in kingdom economy. And it doesn't function like the natural world economy does. And we pay for something what God says pay for it. We may pay twice what somebody asks for it. Why would you ever want to do that? That ain't my business. I don't run this. I just work here. 
But God has a reason for doing that. We're kingdom people. We follow the, we follow the, the, we seek first the king over the kingdom. He tells you to pay more, pay more. Amen. Glory to God. This is kingdom business.